Amanda Luker with Twin Cities Open Circuit, and I'm really happy. I'm really happy to be here today. Last November, a huge e-waste recycling event at the Mall of America was canceled early. Cars jammed the roads surrounding the mall as people scrambled to unload their unwanted electronics. The organizers collected 1.5 million pounds, more in one day than they planned to collect in three. Okay. As the waste grows, there was an 8% increase between 2004 and 2005. 87.5% goes straight to the garbage, ending up in landfills and incinerators. CRT monitors are especially toxic, containing between four and eight pounds of lead. But in that 12.5% that does get recycled, 50 to 80% is shipped directly to Asia or Africa. That waste in turn is often burned or dumped, polluting the water and air. Rapid advances in technology mean that equipment will become obsolete faster, so the pace of e-waste is only going to get worse in the coming years. The tragedy of this poisonous cycle is that this waste could not ha only have been recycled responsibly, but it could have been put to good use in homes that would otherwise have no computer at all. Often low-income families, older adults, people with disabilities, and recent immigrants. Often these folks rely on library computer labs where hours are shrinking and there are often waiting lists. And while youth are increasingly tech savvy because of computers in schools and in after school programs, they aren't always able to continue that learning at home or share their knowledge with family members. People who are technologically disconnected are disproportionately over 65, African American, living below the poverty line and or living with disabilities. And they may face steep learning curves, needing very basic instruction, something most computer stores don't offer. There we go, free geek, helping the needy get nerdy. <laughs> About 10 years ago, a Portland man began collecting computers in the corner of his dining room, intending to repair them and give them to people who needed them. Shortly, with the help of some friends, what started as six computers multiplied into 20,000 machines, and Free Geek was born. Today, Free Geek Portland employs a staff collective of 14 people, and their warehouse and storefront take up an entire city block. The staff help coordinate the volunteers, manage the production of computers, facilitate learning, do tech support, and run a thrift store of low-cost computers and excess hardware and electronics. The Free Geek program offers two tracks, the adoption track, where volunteers get a free computer after 24 hours of work, <clears throat> and the build track, where volunteers build five machines and get the sixth for free. The extra computers volunteers build are sold in a thrift store for around $50 each. One of the best outcomes has been the excitement of the volunteers, who get to touch the inner guts of the machines. As one volunteer put it after going through the program, I still respect it, but I'm not afraid of it. Often people will come for the free computer and stay on to learn about maintaining and building computers or to teach others what they've already learned. As many educators understand, being able to take apart technology builds confidence and allows people to think creatively about how things work. As Make Magazine puts it, if you can't open it, you don't own it. The Free Geek model looks to open, modular, and free, not proprietary or expensive. Free Geek computers, called Freak Boxes, come with 100% open source software, software that is free and has large communities of people all over the world making it, working to make it better. This software includes a robust operating system, browser, office applications, and a photo editing suite. Today, Free Geek Portland has recycled over 1,500 tons of junked electronics and ref refurbished 15,000 computers. They have about 500 active volunteers at any given time. The company is a worker collective and are a model democratically run workplace, even providing health benefits for their full-time staff. In recent years, Free Geek has spread to other locations, including Chicago, Vancouver, Pennsylvania, and Florida. I visited Chicago's location a few weeks ago. They're located in the basement of a, fo of a foot locker, and they host a wide variety of volunteers on Sunday afternoons. Most people there come every week and clearly enjoy being there, despite spending their afternoon in a dark basement. Meanwhile, back in Minneapolis, a small group of us started meeting last year. 
We were all technology workers, geeks, who wanted to a way to share what we were excited about in the growing open source community. Our group soon started hosting regular events like free classes, workshops, and roundtable discussions. Those ideas merged with those of folks who were interested in starting a local free geek, and we decided to combine forces as Twin Cities Open Circuit to offer a platform for open source ideas. And now, with the increased municipal interest in reducing the digital divide, the timing couldn't be better to get this project off the ground. Our group is currently applying for funding for a space for both FreeGeek and OpenCircuit, FreeGeek focusing on hardware solutions, and OpenCircuit continuing to offer uh, internet technology skill sharing events. We hope to partner with low-income housing groups who have a base of clients in need of technology literacy training. One of our most important concerns, though, is what happens to the things that we can't use, the downstream. To make a sound recycling choice, we will be referring to the Basel Action Network, an organization that works to enforce laws around dumping in developing nations. They have a list of recyclers who have pledged to not dump their waste in landfills, export the waste to other countries, or farm out labor to prisons. Our goal is to be the main place to donate old computer equipment in the Twin Cities. Of course, that can't happen until we have a stable place to accept donations and to stage take apart and build sessions and house literally tons of old equipment. We also need a core of active and passionate staff. The Free Geek program addresses several problems at the same time, acting as stewards for the environment, passing on the power of open source to show that computers don't have to be intimidating, and providing equipment to people that they can take home with them for free. You can find out more about how to get involved at tcopencircuit.org. Thank you very much.